So are you into climbing by chance? <laughs> um, well, so I think the requirements for living in Boulder, Colorado are owning a Subaru, um, a Labrador of any kind, uh, and climbing. Unfortunately, I don't do the third, so I'm probably going to get a ticket at some point. Why do you ask? So I've got one out of the three. I have a Yorkie. It's not necessarily the uh, the token Colorado dog, but he uh, he makes do with what he can. Uh, and uh, so I was climbing the other day. In fact, actually, I wasn't climbing. I was uh, over on the trail in Boulder Canyon, and somebody stopped me because I was wearing my Mesa trails. Ah, sweet. So, so wait, so I mean, it's not a climbing shoe. I mean, climbing shoes, again, I'm not a climber, but they're typically like, you know, pointy, hard, weirdly shaped, um, squeeze your toes together. What were you, so how does he, tell me more? Sure, absolutely. So I think like most amateur climbers, and I fancy myself to be basically a 5'8 or below, uh, I'm, I'm spending most of my time just standing on the ground looking up and helping to belay. So I think, in, you know, in terms of my, my gear, it's always a Mesa trail if I'm going to be on some sort of loose uh, trail or I'll be wearing my HFS as if I'm, you know, at an indoor gym uh, sandwich and uh, some, some cordage and a carabiner, of course. Oh, sweet. So, I mean, I know a number of people use like um, the Z trail or other things like an approach shoe or just something for walking around once you get out of those shoes. Um, Cause they, I mean, pretty much weigh nothing. You get to like, you know, clip them onto your belt. Yeah, absolutely. So there's three different types of shoes that I'll typically wear for my approach. And the reason why I wear minimalist footwear for my approach is because I like to warm up, you know, my feet and, and my ankles prior to uh, getting up on the slab. So if I'm in an indoor gym, typically speaking, I'm either barefoot or walking up, I'm wearing something uh, really nice like uh, HFS or Speed Force. And typically those won't damage the mat, so people don't give me a hard time about that. Plus they look really cool. People approach <laughs> me and say, hey, what are those? I say, oh, there's my HFS. In fact, I have some right here. Yeah. So I've got the Glacier blue ones, and these just really pop. That, uh, I, I opted for that color. I'm, I think everything in my wardrobe is blue or some you know, variation of blue. Um, so and, you said, right, so that's really- Go ahead. They're really great on the slack line as well. So they've got this, this tread here that's really uh, pretty awesome for the slack because of course you need to be able to bend your feet and you need to be able to flex. So that's really great on the slack too. If, if you're a bouldering gym or your, your rock climbing gym has a slack line or you're just tripping over a slack line out here in Boulder, <laughs> you can hop on with one of these and you can go from jogging to slacking pretty much nonstop. Yeah, I forgot. It's actually Subaru, uh, Labrador uh, climbing and slack lining. Those are the requirements. Um, and, yep. and be able to and be able to read someone's aura. I think those are the five requirements, so you don't get a ticket when you're walking around Boulder. Um, so, so hey, first of all, just super super cool. So that's what you mentioned for indoors and for outdoors. What are you wearing? What are you wearing them for? So it depends on where I am and what I'm going to do afterwards. If I'm just going to be on some loose gravel, I'll wear my Mesa trails, which I also have here. Let me show you. They're the they're these really cool color. I really like these here, and um, oh, so they're that, really wait, hold, great. Wait, hold it. Is it the green one? Oh yeah yeah. This, this is, yeah, this is the, I think it's the green one. You could, you could tell me the exact name of the color. Yeah, no, it's I just, call it um, green. yeah, no, I, oh, I don't know what the exact color is. Green works for me. So I'll usually wear those because sometimes I'll be jogging right up to the route if I'm going in Boulder Canyon. But sometimes I also like to go into, just dip into the canyon after, you know, a, a session. So I'll wear something like Z trails or um, I've also got clouds as well. So those are really great for that too, because I can just kind of dip in and dip out. I don't have to worry about drawing out my shoes afterwards. So there's really three different pair that I'll, I'll wear routinely when I'm climbing. That's so funny. I used to live right off of Boulder Creek and I'd be in it pretty much every day. And right after we started Zero Shoes, I put on the sandals that I would normally wear to jump in the creek. I won't mention them by name, but they are big and thick and stiff and, you know, kind of brick-like, which I got used to. But then once I started going barefoot and wearing zero shoes, I put them on. Literally, I put them on. I took two steps. I went, oh, that's not going to work. And then I sold them on eBay. Um, and since then, when I'm jumping in the creek, um, I'm usually, I'm actually usually in the Z Trail, which, uh, which I really like. We, we used to sponsor the the Colorado women's professional rafting team. Uh, and they were all in Z trails, which is super fun. So um, I got to go really quick. So if you had like a, you know, your top recommendations for people who are climbing for either, either approach or recovery, what do you, what do you recommend? I mean, it, you know, for me, it's all about flexibility. So mm -hmm. a lot of the times when I'm indoors or I'm standing on, you know, um, I'm standing on the slab, a wide, something with a wide toe box that allowed me to kind of, you know, flex, um, basically. <laughs> After you've been in, a, in the opposite of a wide toe box? 
R right, exactly. So yeah, something yeah. something that I could really kind of just spread out and relax. Uh, just like taking off uh, taking off a suit or taking off a corset or something like that at the end of the day. Not not that I know, but it's just got that kind of relief of, uh, you know, so something that's really going to be very um, sort of therapeutic in, in a sense uh, for your feet after you're kind of squished into your rock climbing shoes all day. Um, also something that's going to allow you to warm up your feet beforehand, mm -hmm. because again, if you're going to be really dynamic, depending on your technique, you're going to want to be able to be able to, to flex and move when you're actually on the slab and you're trying to get a foothold. Oh, very cool. Well, um, again, I got to run. Um, thank you so much for the call. This is super, super cool. And I really appreciate your advice. I'm, I'm going to, do you mind if I post this so other climbers can get some sense of what they might want to take a look at? Yeah, absolutely. It was a real treat. Awesome. Well, um, A, thank you again. Um, B, send me some pics of you up on, uh, you know, climbing anywhere around here. Um, there's, you know, El Dorado Canyon right down the street. So I expect to see up there some pine. When I'm hanging out in the El Dorado Canyon pool, you can be climbing the, the whatever they have up there. I'll strap on my Z trails and, and uh, come on in. <laughs> All right. See you, man. Take care.